Hey guys, my name is Nicolette Mashile. I am also known as The Financial Buddy. Welcome to the official first video of 2022. I'm really excited because I think it's going to be a really good financial year. We're all going to be putting on our building blocks to build our wealth. Now, remember that none of my videos constitute as financial advice. If you are looking for financial advice, please speak to somebody that is certified and qualified to give you financial advice, especially if you're going to be moving around in terms of strategies, but also in terms of changing your financial products and services. So what do I want to kick off the year with? Well, it is the emergency fund savings, right? Now, one of the things that I realized, oh, uh, before I get into this video, guys, please remind me to tell you a story about how I spent the last six months of 2021 doing nothing because of a man. Next time you hear me speak about Njolo, please hit me on the lips. Please, because wow, 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 wow. A very fruitless relationship, a very distracting relationship can be so debilitating to your wealth, guys. Don't do it, okay? Learn from me, don't do it. Okay, let's get back into the emergency fund. So I wanna speak a little bit about why most of the time, many of us find our emergency funds depleted year after year or month after month. And what actually causes this? I also want to speak a little bit about what is the emergency savings. And then I want to speak about three different places where I would keep my emergency savings. So let's start off with an analogy, right? Now, when you are, for instance, in rockets or you had conca or you at a club that you really love bahamas wherever you are yep yep and somebody steps on your white sneakers right and they step on your white sneakers and they don't apologize the first thing you're thinking in your head is emina what is this <laughs> what are you doing why are you stepping on my white sneakers or even if somebody bumps your drink for instance or like you're trying to take a shot and somebody bumps you by mistake of course it's always a mistake but they don't turn around and apologize or at least acknowledge that something has just transpired immediately you fume up right um and you want to get into fight mode or you want to be like tap tap on the shoulder excuse me do you realize what has just happened and, and, and that's na nature, right? Naturally, most of us get upset. Some of us have got some really good emotional intelligence and we turn around and we walk away. This is the time to ask yourself, are you the Puma Silwe after school is after school, left field, C field, rugby field? Or are you the type of person that just says, okay, no, it's fine. But the reality is you might turn around and the person that you are facing is somebody that you immediately know. I'm going to lose. I'm going to lose. So either I'm going to run my mouth because that's what I'm good at. I'm going to swallow my pride and just walk away and say, or even just, you know, you know when you do that shaky thing where you like, ah, dude, like, but you know, like, please don't get into a fight with me because <laughs> I'm going to definitely lose this one. Or you get into it because you know you've got an Olivia Pope somewhere that you can pull, right? You've got that card that you can pull at any point and you know somebody's going to jump in. So you either have a friend that's going to jump in or you either have somebody that you can pick up the phone and call and say, Maji, right? And that is your Olivia Pope. Now, the emergency savings account is exactly that. You don't just call Olivia Pope, Okay. You, do, you only call Olivia Pope when things are going really, really south for you. So you only go into your emergency funds when things are really going south for you. And the only person who can determine whether or not something is about to hit the floor for them, you are the only person who can determine that. You need to have a guide, a boundary for what needs a response by your emergency savings account. So that's really important. And I, I need to, exp to, to stress this out because many of us, due to the fact that we have savings somewhere, we always think that the response to financial needs is always from the money from our savings accounts. And it's always our emergency savings account. We forget that not everything is an emergency. So it's important for you before you even start and planning on your emergencies to emotionally assess what constitutes as an emergency, a financial emergency in your life that needs a financial response. 
Many of us think that we can wash away certain things with money. It's impossible. It's impossible. Not everything can be responded to by money. So that's step number one. Step number two is now saying to yourself, there is a difference between my emergency savings and my regular savings. The reason why most of us get our emergency savings depleted is because we treat one as the same thing. They are not the same thing. You've got to have separate emergency savings and then you have what is called your savings account. Your savings account is there to cater for your short-term needs. Your short-term needs. I'm going to have a birthday party at the end of March because I'm turning 30. Therefore, I want to take my friends out. That's what you save for. It is not going to be you when your birthday comes and then you realize, oops, I have a birthday, so I now need to go and dig into my emergency savings. Those are two different things. So it's important to understand that you've got to have two different sets of accounts. One for your emergency savings for the days when Ziakala indeed, and you need to have an emergency financial response. And then the other for you know, your delayed gratification needs, the things that you want in life that you don't immediately want to buy because you may not immediately have the full amount and you've got to save towards them. Some of us call them our short-term goals or things that come up that are not necessarily emergencies, but they may come up. Oh, I have a friend's birthday. I forgot. A friend of mine is turning 30 at the end of June. Oh, June is here now. And I actually need to go to a restaurant. It is not in my budget. Or I've already gone above my budget. But I can actually afford to go to this friends if I go into my savings. Or I'm moving. I have to move at the end of February. And I need to pay a deposit. Then you go into your savings account. But not your emergency savings account. So what are emergency savings? Again, it is the money that you put away for the day things are not looking great. For the day you need to have an immediate financial response. And I want to stress the word immediate because immediate is such an important part of this entire construction of your emergency savings. Because it, it, it dictates the response, but it also dictates where you put your money. Your immediate is that there is no other way other than you having to. For instance, I'll give you an example. When I first moved into this house that I live in, my garage door fell. My garage door fell. Now, the garage door gives access into my house. It is a security breach. That needs a, an immediate financial response. So it means that I cannot afford to wait for insurance to pay out. What I need is to quickly call somebody to come and fix it. The call-out fee, very high. But because I need to respond immediately... That's when I dig into my emergency savings. That's what an emergency account is for. Something that needs an immediate response. But remember, I said it's also an immediate access that you need to have. So the bank account, the financial product that I am putting that money into, needs to also give me and grant me that immediate access to my funds. So that's very important. But a lot of people then battle with how much. And this is where it becomes a personal finance decision. We stress this all the time. And we say personal finance is about you. It's about your life. It's about your situation, your financial situation. Your emergency fund cannot look like Nicolette's emergency fund because you don't know. Firstly, what are my needs? What do I constitute as an emergency? What do I regard as an emergency? You have your own emergencies. I have my own list of emergencies that could potentially happen. So I want you to think about the insurance industry as I've actually alluded to it. The insurance industry creates insurance products so that when a financial loss or damage occurs, you can have a response. An emergency account is similar to that. You've got to look at your life and say, what in my life could potentially become a crisis? that I do not have a financial product that can respond to it. And that's how you calculate how much you need for your emergency savings account. The benchmark across financial education as specialists is that you keep three to six months worth of your living expenses. Now, a lot of people will say, yeah, but I've got, I've got a date of a car date, I've got a house date of this how much, so I'm going to need this, multiply this by six months. No, remember, 
When it comes to debt, there is what is called credit life insurance. When it comes to your car, there's what we call car insurance. So if any of those things become the financial loss, there is a financial product that may respond to it. But things like school fees, you might not have a response. So if something happens, for instance, you get a salary cut and all of a sudden, the money that you are earning does not respond to school fees. You may need to go into emergency savings and actually pay for your child's school fees. These are the types of things that we're talking about. If you maybe are going to a new school, taking your child to a new school, they're going to grade eight and you find out for the first time that there's a minimum amount of payment that you've got to pay upfront in January. You're waiting for your salary at the end of January, but you've got to pay this in the first two weeks of January for your child to secure a space. That's when you go to your emergency savings because there's no insurance policy that's going to respond to that. That's what your emergency savings are about. And that's how you calculate how much you need. You will never be spot on and don't put the pressure on yourself to be spot on. But also what you don't want to do is to save lower than what you may need or higher than what you will need. Lower, it puts you in a compromising situation where you end up having to use credit to respond to your emergency needs. Higher, it puts you in a position where now you are foregoing an opportunity cost for that money to be able to earn you an interest. Because the reality is most of the accounts or financial products where you are going to have immediate access to your money generally give you a very low and not so attractive return. Which is why it's important for you to make sure that when you are going to decide how much you need, please put the amount that you actually think you may need, that is the highest that you may pay for an emergency in your life. It's very important to think about it that way. So what are the three places where I would personally put my emergency savings? My first one, which is a big win, is always going to be an access home loan account. If you have an access home loan account, it, in, in, is it access? Yes, access or access, whichever one is it. It means that in your, the home loan account that you have allows you to add additional amounts of money. Now, unlike a car loan, for instance, where your money simply sits and is looked at as an advance payment and nothing really happens in terms of how much more you're going to pay on the account up until you capitalize that money. A home loan access account immediately when you put in additional amounts of money into your home loan over and above the monthly required minimum payment, automatically it does a mathematical equation where you will pay less in interest overall. The beautiful thing about the emergency account being kept in a home loan is the mere fact that if you do go over and above that amount, it still works in your favor. And you can say every quarter of the year, you look at how much additionally you are paying over and above and you can capitalize that amount of money, which means that you can lower the installment that you're going to be paying every single month or you can actually keep it your installment and pay off your home loan quicker than you anticipated or the bank rather anticipated. So that's the beauty of using the home loan. The second one, there is an app called the Frank app. The beautiful thing about the Frank app is that unlike platforms like Easy Equities, where you've got a myriad of financial products where you can invest in, the Frank app only has two. One is an equity account, which is called the Satrix Top 40. It is an ETF. It's an exchange traded fund where it bundles up the top 40 um, performing listed JSE or top JSE companies and you invest in those companies because remember it's small parts of 40 different equities. The other one is a cash investment which is a money market from Alan Gray. So there's a split in terms of where your money can go to. Now, that split is determined when you upload or install the app on your phone, you will do what is called a risk assessment questionnaire, and that risk assessment will determine what your split is. The beautiful thing about the app is that it still allows you to manually configure that split. So you could essentially say, you know what? I need, for instance, 15,000 Rand in my emergency fund. But maybe I'm not anticipating an emergency to happen in the next year or in the next six months and you have a split of 50 50 in your equity account and in your cash account and you pump that money into that account 
and you wait it out. But as you are going and you do pass the six months mark, for instance, and you don't have an emergency, you can start actually changing the amount of how you are going to be putting money into the Frank app. You may find that you at some point do get the total 15,000 rand that you need for your emergency fund into your cash account and you stop contributing into the cash account and now you keep contributing into your equity account. And now what you have kind of done now is you now have an investment account while you also have a cash account which can serve as your emergency savings. But while you were working towards it, you had an equal split. The moment you start overflowing into your cash account, you just move that money into your equity account. The third place that I would say um, I would put my money personally is a different savings account with one of the banks. The beautiful thing is that we know with the banks, it is probably one of the safest places where you can put your money. Unless, of course, it's a VBS or the old African bank, stay away from those banks, look at the banks that have proper market share and have proper governance, because governance is a big part. King V, we need it in this country. Governance is such a big thing because it determines whether or not companies are going to be brought down to their knees. If only Steinhoff had proper governance, we would not be sitting with the problems that we're sitting with. Of course, accounting irregularities, we're not going to get into that. But that would be my last resort, is a normal bank account. Normal savings account. Standard Bank has something called the... Standard Bank has a money market account. FNB has a thing called the... What is it called? Is it a multiplier account or something like that? But I think you need like a, a minimum of 100,000 rand. Some people need 100,000 rand as part of the emergency savings. But at least you're earning an interest there. There's also, of course, 32-day accounts. I would not suggest 32-day account. Because if you need your money immediately, the 32-day call account does not work. So you need to look at a different type of savings account. You could go for a normal savings account. Normal. Oh, it's called a maximizer account at F&B. But also financial institutions have money market accounts. I know Standard Bank has one because I think it's also... Yeah, Standard Bank, I've already mentioned Standard Bank. There is a thing called the Gold Save account with Time Bank. You know, so these are different types of accounts that you can look at that give you immediate access. So, in other words, a fixed deposit account would not work. Why? Because it's a fixed deposit account. You cannot get your money for a certain period without having to incur penalties. Generally, those penalties, it's a bad. They're going to be in monetary form. <laughs> so, don't do that. Some people are like what's the word, flirting around with using their tax-free savings account as an emergency account. You can't. It makes no sense. I'll do this in a different video of why you can't use a tax-free savings account. But simple. It is not designed for an emergency savings account. Why? Because one, it has restrictions on it. There's yearly restrictions. You cannot replace what you withdraw in a financial year and the amount that you can Save in, an, in, an, in, an, in a financial year, it's only 36,000 rand. What if your emergency goes above that? Now you don't have a place to save. And once you withdraw, you can't replace. What is the point? So it's very important to make sure that the account you use for your emergency savings is one that actually gives you immediate access. Beats inflation, by the way, because you also don't want your money eroding at the bank. So make sure that even though we know that it does, it, most of these accounts do not attract the base interest rates, it's important to make sure that whatever interest rate you are being given, the real interest rate, minus the banking fees, minus inflation, is still on the positive or at least equals. So that your money is not eroding in terms of its value. That is very important to remember. I call the emergency fund the best sleeping pill on the market because when you do have emergency fund, you sleep well. Fanzer. You sleep well. Let's see each other on the next video. Mwah. Mwah.